Hello friends, welcome back to Aunt Debbie's Boutique. Today I'm attempting something new and that is trying to film in a larger area so that you can see the whole quilt in process. Um, this may or may not work out real good. I have cleared some space in my living room, which is where I film anyway. I have a corner in the living room that I have a sewing machine and cutting table set up for filming because my sewing room is too crowded and too much of a mess to let you in there. Uh, so I film in a, a small corner of my living room and I've moved some stuff aside and put some batting on the floor and we're going to see if we can't uh, do this so you can see the whole quilt as we put it together. First of all, I want to show you what uh, I did with my sample quilt, how I put it together, and we're going to put this one together the same way. It's not the best view of it, but it's the best I could do. So I hung it up on my bookshelves. And I know there's some light that's coming in that's not optimum, but maybe you can see it a little better. And it still needs a good pressing because it's been thrown around a bunch, but I was real pleased with how it turned out. Now I chose to use a navy border, even though I uh, used navy sashing that's what all this is uh originally i wasn't going to i was going to use a gold border but after i got the center put together i just felt like i wanted to play down the mustard color a little bit and enhance the navy so i went with a navy border and i'm glad i did so this is going to be off to the long armors pretty soon whenever i get both quilts ready Okay, let's go back to our quilt today. I hope you can see that all good. I laid these blocks out. There's, ah, there's something behind me just fell because I moved so much stuff. Um, I see a couple things I want to change. I think I'll swap this block with this one i think i'll turn it this way because i had two of the same prints right next to each other there and i think i'll swap this one and this one so that these two aren't next to each other they're pretty similar let's see how that looks that's pretty well balanced. Okay, so in addition to your 12 quilt blocks, you're gonna need a bunch of strips of fabric. You're going to need 12 strips of whatever color sashing that you decided. And they're gonna be three and a half wide by 12 and a half long. And then you're gonna need another 12 that are three and a half wide by 15 and a half long. And if you'll look again at the one I did, you'll see that I didn't just picture frame everything. This block has a backwards L on it. This one has an upside down L, vice versa, all the way through, and they're staggered. I chose that pattern on purpose because these blocks are so random, they really don't have anything to do with each other, that I thought a random way of putting them together was nice. So, and I like the way it turned out. I hope you do too. If you're a person that needs everything symmetrical and balanced in your life, uh, you may not like this way. And, uh, and you can you can put yours together any way you want but uh i'm a person that likes kind of random patterns so that's what we're going to do okay so the first thing i'm going to do is crawl around on my hands and knees and 
place all of my black pieces on here. Now, you'll, one is shorter than the other. We're always going to sew the shorter one on first, and it will always go on one side or the other. And then we'll sew the longer one on either the bottom or the top. Okay. So this might take me a little while. Just bear with me. And I will put in the description box a, a, uh, a description of how this goes together. I'll say block one, bottom and right, block two, top and left. So you know, so you have something to refer to. Okay, that is roughly laid out. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to pin one block at a time and show you how I sew them. And then we're going to sew the whole first row together. And I'll show you how I do that. From then on, I'll do a row at a time just to expedite things. But my first block and I think I'm out of camera shot here so I'll get down on my hands and knees a little my first block I am going to pin the short side, which is on the right, and I am going to force this to come exactly. So I'm going to pin both ends exactly and then tug in the middle to make it fit. And I'm going to pin from this side so I can pin down a couple of seams. And then after we do that, I'm gonna put this black one on. So I'm going to go ahead and pin this end of it. And I'll pin the other after I sew the first black one on. Now, this is where the imperfect becomes perfect. We are going to force everything into a perfect square. And when I got my sample one done and I measured it, I was only off maximum of a half inch from one end to the other. And I call that successful. So uh, when we come to a block that uh, I can tell, okay, on this one, everything's pretty nice and neat. But some, I trimmed it out further on some, and, and some of them were a little shorter. Okay, I'm still going to use a leader so that I get a running start on my seams and I don't have to back stitch or anything like that. Uh, 
Okay, I'm doing this the way backwards than what I intended to. I always like to put the quilt block on top so I can make sure all my seams are turned the right way and I, I didn't do that this time but I will from here on out. Okay, you know me, how I like to iron everything. I'm going to iron this short seam before I sew the long seam on. And I ironed it towards the sashing. And the reason for that is we have all these seams that have extra bulk on our block. And it's a lot harder to iron it that direction. So now I'm going to take the other end of my sashing and pin it exactly and I've pinned this in exactly and then I'm going to stretch it to make it fit and I want to pin from this side so I got that one's a little low this block is a uh, is very square so it's not going to need any adjustment. But we have a couple that will, and I'll show you what I do to compensate. It's not a lot. This step, step is more forgiving than, than your quilt block construction was. Okay, let's sew this seam. First block done. Let me grab my pins again. And I'm going to pin first the short side. Once again, this looks like a pretty square block. It's not one of them that was a little short, but we'll get to one of those. I'm pinned both ends and then I'm just going to stretch it. I keep forgetting to turn it to this side. Stretch it. And line it up best I can. Okay, I do want to show you, maybe you can see, here, unpin this. When I pull this, right here, it kind of drapes down a little bit, and that probably means it's off ever so slightly there. So, I want to, I want to honor that, and so, I'm gonna let that drape down ever so slightly there because if I pull tightly on all ends, everything is square that way. And I'll still take my ha uh, quarter inch seam allowance, but I will use the black fabric, my sashing fabric as my guide. So the seam on this side might get a little smaller than a quarter of an inch, but that's going to make up for where we were off on our quilt block. I hope that made sense. We'll see it more exaggerated on a couple of other blocks. Okay, I'm gonna go sew this one together.
Okay, you'll see here on this one, this is an example. Do you see that this part is a little bit longer than this part? And that means when I trimmed it, that was long enough, or I would have trimmed that off. So this part is going to be down just a little bit, but it gets back on. So you just have to do your best to try to square the block. And if that's confusing to you, um, don't worry too much about it because there's enough stretch and squeeze in this that it will come together. But that's how I like to try to compensate a little bit for where I may have been off on my blocks. Now, after I've stitched, if I have a place like this that's pretty close to the edge, I'm going to go back in there and re and stitch, double stitch it just to make sure it holds. And I'm just going to do it one hair to this side. I mean, very, very close, but yet a different seam, not on top of it. And that will reinforce it. next block and it's going to line up perfectly with this block did I do that right oh I've got this one. <laughs> no I did not I've got this one the wrong direction yes that's the way it goes okay this one I'm going to take over to the machine pin it and stitch it and then we'll put our first row together. if you're having to look at my butt bend it over there uh, I am going to now take and sew this first row together and this is easy you just make sure they fit you, you will have one side that is a quilt block and you just want to make sure you line it up just like we've been doing. Let me pin this before I get confused and sew it on the wrong way. Uh, I had to rip out a couple different times on my sample because I wasn't paying attention. Okay. So one side, once again, is our sashing. One side is our quilt block. And I can tell it's all cut nice and even there, so I know it needs to line up evenly. Okay, let me go sew this.
want you to look at something pathetic here. If I can. Can you see those two guys there? The little Yorkie and the golden retriever? They think they're being so abused because I barricaded them out of the living room. But I knew they'd be laying right on top of my quilt top. So, okay, go lay down. So if you're here whining, you know why. Now here's our first row. Let's hope I sewed it all correctly. See. So you Whoa. can kind of see. Hush, Heidi, go lay down. Go. You can see how it, it goes up and down, the, the black border. Okay, I'm going to take the next row and pin it all, take it over to the sewing machine and stitch it. And when I come to one that is... I need to compensate for, I'll show you, but I'm not gonna make you watch every stitch I put on this. And we'll meet back here when the second row is done. Okay, here's an example of where it's off. Can you see that I cut the straight line, it's pretty straight there, and then it's shorter here. So I, I'm not going to pull that up and make my block crooked. If I get it from a distance, it'll look better. What I'm going to do is use my uh, sashing, my black strip, as the guide for a quarter inch. And so this part of it will be kind of narrow until I get to this point. Now, I will go back and double stitch this just so it doesn't pull out because it will be a narrower seam. So this is one of the situations where when I trimmed it, I can tell that that was where it should have been or I would have trimmed that off. I hope that makes sense and I hope you understand that. Here's another example where just one piece was a little shorter than the other and can you see how I double stitched it just to make sure it didn't come undone okay okay I have my second row done I did swap the last block for the first block on this row because I sewed one of the sashings on wrong and I didn't want to rip it out but it would fit here so I swapped those out Okay, can you see now how our pattern is forming? We have the sashing goes down, cross up, like that. And so now we have sashing where, like this was just the raw edge of the block. It's going to meet up with the sashing on this block. And everything is going to be staggered. Now, the only places we need to worry about matching seams is right here and where's the end of this block? Yeah, right here because that's the end of the blocks. The rest of it will take care of itself. So I'm going to fold this over on this. And it doesn't matter which side this time because you're going to have blocks on both of them. Let's see if I can get a little closer here. I'm going to put a pin in this end, lining these two edges up. Then I'm going to go all the way down to this end and line these edges up and pin it. Then I'm going to stretch it out and I'm going to match this seam here 
and make sure it nests. Now, if you have them turned the same way like I do here, there's several things you can do. You can just not worry about it and sew through two thicknesses there. It's, it's not going to matter that much. You can wait. No, I don't. That one, I, I had it. This is, this is correct. They are staggered like they're supposed to. Um, we could have, uh, I'll go ahead and tell you when that happens, you can either not worry about it, you can re-iron one side or the other, or you can just clip it a little ways down and re-iron that one piece if it's going to mess up something back here. So I'm going to nest that seam and pin it. And then I'm going to nest this one. And yes, it is, they're working out right. And then I'm just going to stretch it out and force fit everything else. I see a place here. where I'm going to have to compensate in my seam allowance. But the rest of it all is pretty smooth. So I'm going to go pin this and iron this on. I'll let, I mean, pin it and sew it on. I'll let you watch me sew this piece. Okay. There's our first two rows together. You'll notice some of the edges don't have a border on them, a, uh, any sashing, but that will be compensated for when we put the border all the way around it. Okay, I'm going to go sew the next row together and sew it on, and then I'll let you see that. Okay, here's our third row put together. The secret to making the imperfect perfect in putting this quilt together is making sure all of your sashing strips are cut accurately. We want to make sure they're exactly 12 and a half and exactly 15 and a half. And after I've cut them, I lay them out again and measure them all to make sure. And then by forcing the block to fit the sashing, we end up with a perfectly square quilt. Now, if you have trouble and your block is just too big to fit on that sashing, you might see if there's a seam somewhere on your block that you could make a little bit bigger so that it fit better. Or if it's too small, you might just want to, well, see if there's one you, a seam you could let out or you may really, I hate to say this, but you might want to remake your block because too small a block will cause it to bunch up. And after you've put all this work into it, you don't want that to happen. So, and as far as the way I compensate for blocks that are too small, uh, in a perfect world, I wouldn't have to do that. You can probably understand that it's better that your block turns out a hair larger and then you can trim it down uh, as opposed to too small. But I'm working on becoming perfect, but I'm not there yet. And so my blocks need compensation. Um, and so that's why I want you to see how I do it and don't beat yourself up if your blocks aren't perfect either. Okay, let me do the last row 
And then we'll have our quilt top put together except for our border. All right, friends, here's our quilt all put together. I just love the randomness of it. Uh, I love how the blocks are not just in straight, perfect little rows and that every block has its own character and story to tell. And all we have left now is to put the border all the way around and it's gonna be a six and a half inch border. And if you wanna go ahead and cut your strips, you're gonna need eight strips that are the width of your fabric. Eight, six and a half strips. And we're gonna put two strips together for each side. Now we're gonna trim that down some, but uh, we're still gonna need that much fabric. So I, I believe that's gonna take a couple of yards. Um, hopefully I'll be back tomorrow and I'll show you how to measure your quilt top so that we get the perfect size border on it because all of us are gonna be different because we all take different seam allowances. So there's gonna be variation in the size of all of our quilts. And I'll show you how to come up with the perfect size for your border. And we will put that on and we'll talk about quilting options and uh, how to do that tomorrow. Now, the reason I can't do it today is I'm still waiting on my fabric that I ordered for the border and for the back to come in. This is Wednesday and it's supposed to be here tomorrow so I need to have a video up on Saturday with that if I'm not to miss a day. So if there's any trouble in getting my shipment, they deliver it to the wrong place or it doesn't get here, I'll put a post that says that last video is going to be delayed. But hopefully it'll just be tomorrow for you and we will have this finished. All right, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you will please like, subscribe, uh, comment, share, all of that good stuff. It really helps me uh, grow my channel and I'm real appreciative of all the growth we've had just recently. So thank you to each and every one of you. And remember, whatever you do, do it to the glory of the Lord. I'll hopefully see you tomorrow.